Michelle Obama, Stormy Daniels, Yoko Ono, just some of the famous names making the list for Time Magazine's 13 new books everyone will be talking about this fall. And you can also add Fresno State professor Bradley W. Hart to the notable nonfiction list whose book Hitler's American Friends is gaining lots and lots of buzz. And we are lucky enough to have the author with us today, joining us this afternoon. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Hart. Thank we you appreciate for having it. Me. It's very exciting. Thank you. This is really great. How <laughs> did you write this book? What came to your head that you wanted to write Hitler's American Friends? Uh, well, as I was researching my PhD, I sort of realized that there's an incredibly untold story here. And it's a story that's not in the history books. I've taught American history. I've looked at all those textbooks, and this simply wasn't there. So I thought this was a really important story to tell. And as events have sort of have shown. I started writing this in 2015. This has become even more relevant now after wow. Charlottesville. Wow, why is that? Well, I think it, kind of shocking for people to see mm -hmm. swastikas being carried next to American mm -hmm. flags, certainly mm -hmm. shocking for me. And I think looking into the history of how that happened in the past and why that's happening again is incredibly relevant. Yes. So let's break it down here. What is the basis of the storyline for your book? Yeah, so in the book I told the story of seven groups that were pro-Nazi or Nazi-leaning during the 1930s and early 1940s. So the most predominant was known as the German-American Bund. It was an organization of largely German-American immigrants who had, some of whom had had connections to the Nazi party in Germany. Uh, we have a photo of it on the screen now, it looks like. This is a parade that took place about 1938 in New York. Um, and if you look very carefully at the screen, you'll see that there are swastikas being carried next to American Whoa. flags because part of the appeal of this organization was they were combining the symbols of Nazism and Germany with Americanism. So it was kind of a mixed identity for a lot of people that were members of this group. And then I go through a few other organizations, the most famous of which is, is called the America First Committee, which had more than 800,000 members nationwide. Mm -hmm. Let's go through some of these slides that you sent us over because it's so interesting. Um, the, this slide, tell us about this, this one. So this is Congressman Martin Dyes Jr., who was the chairman of what would later become the House Un-American Activities Committee, HUAC, very famous in the 1950s. But during the 1930s and early 40s, Martin Dyes Jr. Jr. was a uh, was the chairman of this committee and investigated un-American activities. So he actually was responsible for investigating and bringing down some of these groups. Mm -hmm. I love what you said though, Dr. Hart. You do not find this in history books. Absolutely Especially not. the American flag with the Nazi symbol. That is shocking to me right now, 2018. And, and I think it's incredibly important to tell this story. Um, this slide is actually Martin Dyes Jr. on the left there. And on the right, we have a gentleman named John C. Metcalf, who was actually a journalist who infiltrated a lot of these organizations and wrote some salacious pieces in a Chicago newspaper in 1937. He then actually ended up being hired by Martin Dyes to infiltrate more of these far-right organizations. So really a hero of the story. Mm. And then let's keep showing the slides while we talk about them. But I also want to ask you about the challenges of the research that you had to do mm. for Absolutely. this book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is Gerald L.K. Smith, who was one of the most famous sort of rabble-rousers, you might say, of this era. And he went around condemning the Roosevelt administration using a combination of religious rhetoric and also just very virulent anti-Semitic rhetoric. And I love how you mentioned that Hitler had some key friends on Capitol Hill. Can you tell us about them? Indeed. This is one of the key uh, figures in that area. This is Senator Ernest Lundeen of Minnesota, who was actually the only farmer labor senator, a political party that still exists in the upper Midwest, but is not nearly as popular as it was. Uh, and Ernest Lundeen actually had a German spy in his own office, <gasps> writing speeches wow. for him that were delivered on the floor of the Senate. And this is a story that again, has, has really been left out of the history books and I think is important. Mm -hmm. and, and, and probably that's why it is gaining so much national attention. Did you expect this? Did you expect to be named uh, as uh, one of the uh, most notable authors and books to be seen in, in Time Magazine? Well, I have to say being next to Stormy Daniels and Yoko Ono was quite a surprise. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, Something you never expected. Yeah. That is a list I never expected to be on, yes. <laughs> I'm gratified by the attention. I think it reflects how important this story is. I mm -hmm. hope people will go out and pick up the book. And I think there's a lot that really informs our own times. Mm -hmm. Well, I love how you also tied it into Charlottesville and just how important it is to understand the past so we don't repeat it. Exactly. And one of the points I make in the book is that our political parties have a great role in sort of policing themselves, for lack of a better term. It's very important for political parties to make sure the candidates they're putting up are, are good not only for their party but for the country. And I think mm -hmm. that's a lesson that now is perhaps more important for both parties than ever before. I'm going to go back to the whole research because uh, it just intrigues me mm -hmm. how much research you must have had have done for this book? About three years worth, um, off and wow. on. Obviously, I, I'm busy teaching at Fresno State much of the time, but certainly every summer was used for this. I researched extensively in the UK, so 
I spent a lot of time in London and in Cambridge for this um, because the British, it turns out, knew more about this stuff mm. than the FBI did in this mm. period. Wow. period. So that was very interesting. Also went to Kansas, um, went to Texas, to yeah. a place called Liberty, Texas, where Martin Dye's papers are. So it was very exciting and very interesting. Wow. Well, Dr. Hart, if you don't mind hanging tight, we have to go to commercial break, but we'll talk to you for a few more minutes when we come back. Absolutely. Thank you.